Apple's M4 chip series lineup has leaked and we now know exactly what to expect this fall with Apple's new M4, M4 Pro and M4 Max MacBook Pros as well as the new Mac mini desktop machines but whatever happened to the Mac Pro and the Mac Studio? Did Apple really leave their highest end machines to rot and die while the laptops take over? Well, in this video, I'm gonna discuss Apple's master plan for their Apple Silicon releases going forward because we now have a very clear trend showing up. And not only that, but there's a very good chance Apple is gearing up for the biggest Mac Pro launch of all time. So let's jump right in. First of all, the current M2 Ultra, Mac Studio and Mac Pro that we have is very, very disappointing. In fact, the M3 Max MacBook Pro is faster in multiple tasks, mainly because of the graphics updates with the ray tracing and others, which are making it beat it out, which is just mind blowing because it's just so much less expensive. Now, of course, the single core is obviously a lot faster, which means you get more snappy performance for regular apps and especially for web browsing. But now we have the M4 chip in the iPad Pro and it destroys the M2 Ultra in terms of single core and web browsing by far. It's just a night and day difference. And yes, we unfortunately did not get the M3 Ultra Max Studio at WWDC like we thought. Yes, we were wrong. Mark Gurman was right all along like he always is. He proves to be the best time and time again. But the big question is why? Why did the M3 Ultra not come at WWDC? Well, there are two very good reasons. First of all, the N3B chip technology from TSMC proved to be very, very expensive, mainly because of the bad yield since it was a new process. So basically it made it not really worth making the M3 Ultra chips since those chips are already more difficult to manufacture. So if you stacked bad N3B yields on top, it would have been a nightmare for Apple to make those M3 Ultras. And that's probably why the M3 Max die didn't even have the Ultra Fusion connector on the bottom of the die like we had with the M1 Max and the M2 Max. So Apple likely needed to save money and yields by cutting that portion off since there were so many issues with M3B, they probably decided ahead of time to not even make an M3 Ultra. And for reason number two, there is actually a new trend that has formed. Apple seemingly is going to start skipping updates on desktop Macs as part of their Apple Silicon master plan. If you think about it, Apple skipped the M2 iMac update and they waited until the M3 chip to give us the M3 iMac. Apple is now clearly skipping the M3 and M3 Pro Mac mini and waiting for the M4 and M4 Pro Mac mini this fall like I made in the recent video. And same thing for the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro. Apple is clearly now waiting for the M4 series chips to launch next year, likely around WWDC in June. Now, why would Apple do this? Why would they be skipping chips on the desktop Macs? Well, there are three very good reasons. Number one is that if they released the updates every single year with each chip for the desktop Macs, there simply is not enough performance or chip feature improvements every generation to warrant updating the desktop Macs every chip generation. Skipping a year allows Apple to have bigger improvements in performance that they can market when Apple does eventually upgrade them. But number two is an even bigger reason. Desktop Macs simply don't sell that well, especially compared to MacBooks. Just look at this survey from CIRP following the sales of Apple's Macs in 2023. Apparently, 90% of all Mac sales that year were MacBooks, with 51% of the sales going to the MacBook Pro and 39 to the MacBook Air. Only 1% of sales went to the Mac Mini and the Mac Studio, while 3% went to the Mac Pro and 4% to the iMac. 
And looking at these numbers, it's no wonder why Apple updates their MacBooks every single year, because people buy them like crazy, so it makes sense to update them all the time, like Apple does for their iPhones. But updating desktop Macs annually would be wasting so much money on retooling in the manufacturing, repackaging new motherboards with new chips, into the chassis and everything else, it's just not worth it for Apple. And for reason number three, people upgrade desktop machines less often because with desktops, if it works, you just leave it. You don't really think about upgrading it. It sits there in your home office, ready for you to use when you need to. And you basically need a really good reason to upgrade desktop Macs. And with that said, desktop PCs don't have the best resale value, especially compared compared to laptops and MacBooks, which you take everywhere and they have a very high demand for that reason. And since there's a trend of upgrading desktop PCs less often, it doesn't make sense for Apple to update them as often. Hence why Apple decided to wait until the M4 series chips to update the Mac Studio and the Mac Pro as well as the Mac Mini. Now my original take on why I thought the M3 Ultra would come at WWDC was that the M2 Ultra chip is a a really bad value, being worse than the M3 Max MacBook Pros, which are so much cheaper, and soon the M4 Max MacBook Pros are coming in the fall, and they would absolutely destroy the more expensive desktop Macs. So I believed that Apple had to update them to keep them relevant because those machines have higher profit margins than the less expensive Macs. Well, it looks like I was wrong. Apple doesn't care if their less expensive M4 Max MacBook Pros totally embarrass the $7,000 Mac Pro because those models barely sell anyway, and they'd rather make their MacBook Pros look better to sell those in even higher volumes, which is more worth it than selling the Mac Pro at a higher profit since barely anybody buys those anyway. It's almost like Apple wants reviewers to compare the $3,300 M4 Max MacBook Pro to the $7,000 M2 Ultra Mac Pro just to blow people's minds and make the MacBook Pro look like a killer deal and help sell more of them. So what if Apple's goal for the Mac Pro is just to point down to the MacBook Pro? That honestly doesn't sound like a good enough reason to keep updating the Mac Pro year after year unless Apple has something huge in store. Like let's say an exclusive never before seen chip, which I believe they do have. So let's jump into the major M4 Extreme chip leaks. First off, we have leaks of the Hydra chip from Mark Gurman, which apparently he said was a chip that was supposed to go exclusively into the Mac Pro, yes, not the Mac Studio because he said there was a Brava high tier chip for the Mac Studio, which he said there's supposed to be Brava, which means the M4 Pro, the M4 Max, and a third Brava for the Mac Studio. So the Hydra is completely unique for the Mac Pro. And yes, that of course points to the M4 Extreme chip, never before seen, basically four times as powerful as the Max, two times as powerful as the Ultra, and it is gonna be insane. My take is that what if Apple moves the Ultra Fusion connector from the current Max dies to the Ultra die, so you can combine two Ultras to create the new M4 Extreme, hence the word Hydra. You have two heads to the chip, combined together they make a whole new beast of the chip, M4 Extreme, which is gonna be the fastest computer chip ever made. But wait, it doesn't end there because more than a year ago, Mark Gurman leaked brand new MPX modules, custom Apple Silicon graphics for the Mac Pro. Yes, we had leaks about that, but they have died down, likely because I believe they were supposed to come, but Apple put them on the back burner because they weren't ready. So the M2 Ultra, Mac Studio, and Mac Pro just ended up being a quick refresh to get rid of the old Intel chips 
in the Mac Pro. They just got it done with, got it out, and they're still developing those MPX modules, which are not yet ready, but they are gonna be absolutely insane. However, I do kind of feel like the Apple Silicon MPX module cards might not be ready until the next update after this one, let's say with the M6 Ultra or the M6 Extreme chips built on two nanometer technology from TSMC. It seems like Apple could easily get away with another simple chip update again next year with the M4 Ultra, seeing as they skipped the M3 Ultra, so there's gonna be a really big performance difference, let's say up to 50% faster in single core and basically the same for multi-core as well. Just look at these charts. It can be extremely fast with that new M4 Ultra chip. And imagine the M4 Extreme. If Apple can make that happen, it's gonna be absolutely insane. So with that said, what do you do for the time being while you're waiting for those new Mac models. Well, honestly, I say do not buy the M2 Ultra Mac Studio or the Mac Pro. They are just not worth it. They're not fast enough. I say either wait for the M4 Max MacBook Pro, if that's something that works for you, if you can get an external display, hook it up, use it that way, it's gonna be insanely fast, or just wait until next summer, the new Mac Studio and Mac Pro, they're gonna be really, really fast with those new M4 series chips. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know your thoughts down below. Definitely subscribe above for more videos like this, and check out the Mac Mini leaks right there. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.